I welcome you to the Air Crash Investigator and this time I'm looking at an R22 uh, experiencing low rotor RPM and then obviously this followed uh, a crash and this was during game operations. Uh, just a reminder that I am working with the Seams aircraft auditing system and the Seams training system and you can see on here that um, I specifically put a little bit of accident investigation in there which is part of the online training so look in the description below and you will find the information there now the R22 crashed during the game operations and here is the history of flight so first let's just look have a look at the picture all right the aircraft on its roof this is where it's accident this is where the boma is and that green is the curtain so the idea is to get the game chase them and they go into this section here you close the curtain and then you have caught them and they were busy trying to catch zebra just some information to keep here the altitude already here we're looking at 4920 at a temperature of 31 degrees and you look at a density altitude of six uh, seven thousand five hundred and forty feet now that is high the R22 is, 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 is not a, a, a power beast. Um, I, I know there's a lot of people say it's not the right aircraft and can again. The, the Robinson 22 has been used many times very successfully in this kind of operation. But remember, it's got its limitations. Down at the coast, it's okay. Up in the this kind of 7,500 feet uh, density altitude, it is bad news. And how we fly will obviously get into them. Will experienced pilots get into a knot? Unfortunately. So let's just let's just look at the history of the flight. They were capturing zebras by chasing them into the boma and we've explained that the helicopter is not overweight but more weight than is needed. Now what is here is that inside there was a lot of 15 or whatever pints of oil. I don't know why he was dragging so much oil in the aircraft with him um, I don't know if there's something wrong with the engine. I don't know. The fact is that um, although the aircraft is not overweight, one must never confuse overweight in terms, uh, but at that density altitude for the maneuvering that you want to do, the aircraft's weight is actually over the capability of the engine. I want to hear that. But remember, we say the all of weight of the aircraft is it. But what is the all of weight of the aircraft at that density altitude? That's the question. And what's the performance you can get out there? So it's a it's a it's a very very difficult one. Okay, helicopter not overweight. The performance at density altitude seven five very poor, close to the ground, hard maneuvering. And now you must start uh, understand to chase a buck, in this case a zebra. The animals will go into a point and then all of a sudden decide, mm -mm, not going that way, I'm going that way. And you've got to get your helicopter immediately on and try and stop the breakaway, especially in such an extremely tiny area where this operation actually took place. Um, uh, yeah, very, very dangerous. Animals broke away from the Boma, maneuver around to stop them. The wind is calm, less than five knots, loss of the NR or the main rotor RPM, and the crash is non-fatal. Why do you lose NR? Well, you know, a lot of times you will say it's, it's the wind, it's the engine, it's the this. If you do a very serious hard maneuver, there's two things that you must remember is that, let's call it the lift vector, if you wish, is tilted very far from the vertical axis and the aircraft will have now to go to the ground and the harder you turn the higher the nose will have to be to stop that and that's like a flare action but in that turn if you go slightly down on power then your negative side of everything because you cannot do that go on power and no pull up not with governors governors don't like that because they lag just that slightly so I suspect a little bit of a technique problem here but right 
the circumstances are very bad and it's a it's a very well qualified pilot so i'm not uh, uh, rushing that this happens if you're a game pilot and you haven't experienced a loss of nr you haven't been in the game industry all right that's normal for us but um, there are techniques and if we overstep so remember when i'm showing this i am talking to um the younger generation out there to be be very careful to fly um you are a cowboy but sometimes you can't fly like a cowboy okay all right that is probably not well said but the accident causation possibilities and remember i say its possibilities now here you can see the the path that he was flying and a hard maneuver this one this one here this is the critical one the maneuver that um, to fly that tight and the speed would have been very low would have demanded an exceptional amount of energy from the engine to retain the main rotor rpm which it was not there because of the density altitude and the engine could not perform sufficiently to keep it up that's just something that we must know but anyway the pilot um, did his best and he did it as he's done before he's got lots of experience just the thing to mention here is we can see that once the tow rotor came off and stuff like that but eventually look at the blades they they're a little crumpled and, and so and so but you know the blades is in such good condition that we can just from the photograph say that my goodness gracious this was an extreme low rpm situation so let's go to the left the helicopter is not as light as it could be the pilot we've got that then very high density uh r did not perform that high extremely tight area to work in this is an uh, is one of the things whether it's it's a very very small area where they had to walk into to um uh, to get the animals into the boma and quick and hard maneuvering causes loss of nr quick maneuvering now for the pilots out there remember a quick maneuver is only a quick maneuver up to a certain point in terms of that it can be uh beneficial in terms of flare effect but the moment you go down on the collective you nullify all the the extras that you have um but even using a full out flare effect um if you put put too much uh demand on the main rotor system the engine just simply hasn't got the top end power at seven and a half thousand feet density altitude nose attitude high and the tail section strikes a tree although the pilot managed to level the wings there was simply no power sufficient to prevent the impact with the ground the inert impact is extremely low with the main rotor blades hardly damaged and the tail boom is severed during the strike by the main tree so just to show how that happens <laughs> i've been so we always cut the tail off well, what is it that happens why do we cut the tail off well yes just one reason but remember the tail is cut off by one of the main rotor blades now as you come in with a helicopter and it pumps there it whips forward and as it whips forward this blade is still here and the tail actually whips into the tail or the tail whips into the blade at least all right so here you can see i say on striking the tail section on the ground obstacle helicopter body starts a rotating moment nose down the blade firstly cannot get out of the way quick enough and secondly downwards flapping momentum carries the blade lower in the control orbit flapping increases due to low nr so remember the blades has also got flapping so it hits on the ground and with a lot of centrifugal force it can withstand that flapping motion but if the centrifugal forces are low the flapping motion is higher so there's like two reasons but i just thought to get you in here this is typically that happen we come down we come down we don't know what to do we hit the ground and at that the helicopter moves forward the tail section moves up around the center of gravity 
But the blades, she's still there. And the tail rotor now interferes with the blade and, as I said, extra um, flapping. So what are the lessons that we can take for, away from here? The main rotor RPM will decay due to hard maneuvering. That is a fact. Okay? Now, add those truths to the density altitude. And you should be scared. I'm not, not such a run away. But remember, everybody thinks that the pilot can just do this and this and this in the air. Your reputation is online, but remember, you're like, your, your reputation, um, some people say, hey, this pilot can fly, and then he pranks, and you never hear them talk about that pilot again. So remember, your 15 seconds of fame is short-lived. 15 seconds, okay? Abrupt control change that form effect on the rotor energy maintenance and, and, and absorption. Max oil of weight is not only limit, but more so the performance reduction. With very high density of the control input must be progressive and smooth. And unfortunately, if we fly up in the mountains at... 10,000 feet and, and above, then it's all sluggish and slow and everything happens like this because the air is very thin. But at 7,500 feet, it's considerably thinner in effect than at uh, sea level. All right? So you need bigger inputs and the air needs, the, the blades need to work harder to get the same result. And therefore, the engine must work harder. All right. Okay, beware of extreme tight area operations. I think that's one of the good reasons probably here. Wind will always play an enormous role, but ending up into wind with no RPM and no height is always devastating in results. I think a lot of people think as long as I can just end up into wind. Well, that's great. That will aid you in the last seconds before you hit the ground. But you cannot end up into wind after a maneuver with nothing else, then you're going to go down there. Not how they say so. It's part of the aerodynamics. It's part of the mechanics. It's part of what we have to do and understand to be able to do our job. All right. Always make your helicopter the lightest. We at one stage had a, had a, a flight with a, uh, an Oryx, which is actually a Super Puma, against a Mirage. And who could get to 10,000 feet? And everything in the helicopter was taken out. The, the, the smallest, lightest flight engineer, the smallest, lightest co-pilot went with the officer commanding of the, of the, the, um, of the squadron to go and do the flight. And, and, that is what you do. Do not enter into hard maneuvering if you can do it at a lower weight. Fuel and any other additional non-essential stuff on board, get it out. Until next time.